Today we're going to create some waterproof detailing and we're using this PDF from James Hardy which looks at all different sort of waterproofing detailing mostly using their products of course uh, and we're going to start with page 8 so this document is called Wet Area Construction Application Guide so page 8, so to import this into Archicad we'll drag and drop the file choose page 8 place now there's a little bit of an issue sometimes when we're importing files um, of course, are they vector-based? Are they rasters? In this case, this is a vector-based file, so this is brilliant. But we don't know the scale. At the moment, I've imported that at a scale of 1 to 5, meaning I've been at 1 to 5 when I've imported it. But it really depends on what scale this was created at as to whether this imports to scale or not. We effectively don't know until we test it out. So let's try that. Let's grab a line and we'll just measure, we've got 50 millimeters here, we'll assume that that line's actually 50 millimeters and we measure, we see it's, well it's not actually 50 millimeters, it's 64 and that also is a bit of a problem because it means we're probably not dealing with a true scale. So it very well in order to be able to place in this document have been resized so it's probable that we can't even import it truly to scale. That's not very important though because we can of course rescale it or resize it in Archicad. So once we've imported it, it's imported as an image, the next thing we need to do is to explode that file. In order to explode it, we select, right click, explode into current view. Uh, we wanted both, yes, keep the original elements after exploding and to also create these additional lines and text. So we can see here we've got the original PDF and we've also created all of this line and text, which is great. Now if we were to move this part away, this is our PDF. I'm going to move it 2,000 millimeters away. We can see that we've got a, another image. So we could delete that image if we wanted to. And that image was all of the colors. And then we're left with a PDF that we could move back and all of these lines. There's still more fills here but they're not really important to us, just background fills and then lines. And if we've got this option here deselected or suspend groups, we can see that that's also breaking it down into smaller parts. So again, that's great. Uh, it's creating poly, poly lines, not necessarily just individual lines. Uh, what commonly happens though when we explode files is our text turns into fills or lines and things as well. So that's okay. We're not wanting to keep this. What I'm suggesting we're actually going to be doing is tracing it. I find it sometimes easier to trace than to use the original. So we're going to do this for a few different files. And again, uh, I don't like using the originals. It ends up becoming too messy. So what we'll do instead is to trace. So in order to trace in details, we've imported this into details and I called it bathroom details. I'm going to create a new independent detail and I'll just call this one bathroom details trace. Now in terms of a, a naming protocol it probably makes more sense that we take this information maybe we'll do the whole thing and cut control X place let's keep that scale at 1 to 5 paste, because we don't really want to be um, working on the one that's called trace, we probably want our trace to be our trace reference. Alright, one more thing, let's resize this or rescale this as best as we can, edit, reshape, resize, and I want to make sure that I've got my grouping suspended before I do that. I'm going to use define graphically, and what can I use to resize? I have a piece of timber here. I could base it on the size of timber, uh, assuming that maybe that's a 90 by 45 stud. We have 40 millimeters here, but we see that the arrows and the lines don't necessarily match up, which is a little bit concerning. And we see we've got a size here, which is 50 millimeters, and, and that doesn't necessarily line up as well. So let's try this one first. I always suggest using dimensions, and generally, always starting with the largest dimension. So I'm going to click on that first line, click on that second line, which is defined as 50 millimeters. R50, enter, 
that to resize both my image and the fill. Now if I was to select this, then that leaves that as 50 by 100. Now, nominally, we might talk about our timber framing be 50 by 100, and traditionally, if this was a piece of hardwood, it could be 50 by 100. If we're talking about modern construction, uh, that's more likely to be 90 by 45. So this is very commonly the case. We might be trying to trace something and uh, it's not necessarily based on what we'd like it to be. So what do we use instead? We can either trace it like it is and do it not to scale, or we can resize and reconfigure as we're going, which is again one of the reasons why I prefer to trace than to use the real thing. So on our detail called Bathroom Details, we're then going to right click onto the one that's called Trace. We can now see our 2D drawing information and we can see our filled coloured information and if it's not going to be a little bit problematic, I should have really moved this later but that's fine, we can now move this back so it's in place and if that helps us to see then that's great. Now if you're not seeing that colour why might that be? If you can't see the image, that's probably based on a trace reference setting. So go down to your trace and reference. And we might want to go to this little arrow, more reference options. And maybe we just choose them all. We choose to make all types traceable. Apply settings. We might also not like the colour. Maybe we're going to change that to a blue instead which might make that a little bit more visible. And of course I could make that a little bit lighter, reduce its intensity if I wanted to as well. Great. Now that's going to be a little bit too bold for me, uh, but if you want to make it bolder for your screen then do so. I'm going to stick with that torpy colour. Now let's start tracing. How would I trace this detail? I like to use the fill tool, not the line tool. So using the fill tool, I will find a pattern, uh, something that's representing what I want. In this case, I'm usually going to use a 25% or a 50%. Normally I'll start with 50% and I'll find maybe a timbery brown color. Of course, this is my customized pens. Yours might look different to this and I'll draw the stud. Now when I draw the stud, I could just trace it as we see it. That's not necessarily going to give me the dimensions that I want. What do I want it to be? I want it to be 90 by 45. So we can see that there's very different sizes here. Uh, this is a, what was that? I think that was 75. 75 by 38. Uh, again, I'm going to stick with a 90 by 45, so I'm going to redraw it and I'm going to start from the bottom corner because that's, I guess, the true corner, the one that's consistent, and then I will go up. 45, pressing D or R to define that number, press enter, move across to my left and type in 90 and press enter. So that's created a box which is exactly 90 by 45. Um, onto that box, that fill, we can see we can see through it which is one of the reasons why I really like using a percentage fill. I can then add an outline. When I'm cutting through an object, I want it to be a fairly thick line, so number three would work well. And then I don't have the simple ability to create an X as a fill pattern. That's one of the things that our fill patterns don't do really well. Instead, I'll just use lines. And when I draw lines, I'm going to use a, a pen one, so it's very thin. So when we're drawing in detail, we want the outline of something that's sectional to be thick. When we're representing a fill, we want the, the line to be very thin. And then if we're representing something in elevation, we want its line to be a little bit thinner. So let's now change this to 25%. Put an outline on, but now we're going to make that pen 2. And we will project this stud, this wall frame, up. And hopefully you can see what's starting to happen. That's mostly what I want. Um, I'm starting to explain this wall framing. And of course we'd go through and just trace all of the elements as a necessary using the right type of fill setting. We can either draw from scratch or we can drag and copy. And then one choice that we need to make is are we going to leave gaps or are we going to make things press up hard against each other? 
the next one that I need to draw is a fibre cement. So I'm just going for now to use this uh, dot dash. And I'm going to base this on a 6mm villa board. I'll start from the bottom just to explain what I'm doing. Drawing up to this line. I'm using the rotated rectangle. I find that the, the easiest, maybe the most straightforward to use. R6. And then what we saw was happening with this villa board is rather than having it go all the way down to the ground, we're then lifting it up off the ground, maybe six millimeters as well. So my method, my preferred way to do this would be to deliberately draw in such a way that makes it fast and then we can make adjustments as we go. Let's select this same one rather than drawing it from scratch, move, drag a copy move rotate and we'll rotate this around this time move this down underneath and I made this six so then we'd have to make this a bit larger but first we might start to get a bit more information so we're not just tracing something so let's just make it 10 at the moment so it's 16 uh, but then we need to determine well what is the thickness of this product that we're actually using so if we don't have those answers maybe we need to refer back to the guide it would be really nice if they told us that let's see if they have sky on secure interior floor or hardy panel compressed sheet but they haven't said what thickness so maybe we then in terms of our detailing need to start doing a bit more research to understand what size we need what's that based on maybe it's based on the span what we're trying to do are we using a 450 or a 600 mil joist uh, is that possible to span that with this particular floor thickness um, so in the next video we'll come back with some of these answers and continue drawing. Other things we might need to know is what's the thickness of the floor tile, what's the angle of the tile, and that depends on whether this is a shower enclosure or if this is a general bathroom area. And I'll also show you some of the different um, relationships between this particular detail that we're tracing and some of the others which have different answers.